We're rolling. Timer starts now. Mark. Hi, I'm Ford. And I'm Sky. And these are not our real names. These are our superhero names, and with our powers combined, we formed the writing partnership L. Skyford. Welcome to Booklandia. You've joined us today for a mini-sode, where we will geek out about literary topics like plot and character tropes, and maybe some book news. But before we get much further, did you know you can watch our faces do this episode by subscribing to us on Twitch at L. Skyford or YouTube at L. Skyford? You should do it. We give good face. And sometimes there's a dog bomb at Ford's house. This is true. For our other socials, you can follow us on Twitter at SkyfordL, on Instagram at L.Skyford, and if you're interested in our book, blog, or even more book reviews, head over to our website, lskyford.com. Lastly, this and every episode are chock full of oversharing and spoilers, and every episode is rated E for explicit. You have been warned. Hi. mini it's our second to last mini <laughs> Yes. Yes, it is. And uh, this minisode, we are talking about books set in a small town. Books that have to do with small town towns. Teeny town, a little town. Teeny it's a town. Microscopic, microscopic town for dolls. Oh, I just thought of one that <laughs> we'll get to it in a second, but I just thought of one okay. that isn't on our list yet. Okay. I'm pretty sure I know what it is, so I'm going to write it down, and then I'm going to show it to you when you say it. Okay. <laughs> let's, play, let's, let's play a game. Let's play a little game. All right. Excellent. Uh, yeah. So small town trope. Uh, I'd say medium popularity. Uh, there's we're gonna get to it. There's definitely some writers who love it and use it all the time. Uh, and it celebrates living in a small town. Uh, the small town almost always plays a part, plays a character in the book, or provides impetus for the characters in some some way some it, yeah i mean it's it's relative small proximity uh, small proximity uh force proximity <laughs> because there's yep. only one hotel only one restaurant everyone knows your business um in one of tessa bailey's books runaway girl there's only the one church where everyone gets married so it it definitely creates the that boilerplate that that is the the good um, mm -hmm. like crux of a story. Uh, it also allows for all of these people to be friends and family, right? They don't need an excuse to be each other's friends and family. They are just there, right there. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're it. They're it constantly for each other. And so they show up for each other and it shows a breadth of character that in a big city might be harder to articulate without setting up situations like sort of situational comedy happens and tragedy happens all the time so yeah. uh i think for me it doesn't it is very idyllic and it doesn't always work because i think the reality of living in a small town can be really difficult uh and uh financially devastating and isolating and mm -hmm. closed off not always not in all small towns but I think that sense of like everybody's friends and everybody helps out is yeah. maybe not always. I don't know. I'm a, a city person, so I am absolutely coming at it as an outsider. And it's hard to believe that they're all like this loveliness. I know you are extremely correct. Uh, I spent my summers with my dad in a small town. And unless somebody had the same last name as me, I didn't know who they were. And uh, my small town had a highway going through it and a post office and a cemetery. And that's it. So uh, I knew we knew our neighbors' names and we knew our family members' names, but the other 20 people in the town, I didn't know at all. So uh, yeah, I definitely go with idyllic. Yeah. Uh, it does play into those, uh, those, plots where strangers would be noticed so if like that partner in danger trope a stranger coming after the main character would be noticed in a small town um so pros and cons pros and cons yeah so it's an okay trope for me i i like when the town has a, 
a, it plays a character or it has some sort of big external uh, driving force in a story, I don't like it to just be a pretty dress on a book. Yes, I, I agree. Yeah, when it when it's important to the storyline, great. Otherwise, uh, it could be, it does not have to be a small town. I think partially the appeal is that you escape, right? Like it's it's sort of like a, yeah. uh, a, um, a vacation read. You read something about people on vacation and for some people going to a small town is like being on vacation. So that, that I think mm. is the appeal. Uh, so mm -hmm. having said that, there are authors that, there we, we like we started listing their their books and oh all of their books are <laughs> about small towns i'm thinking specifically about tessa bailey mm -hmm. all of her books that i have read and i've read three different series of hers are about people in small towns about the small town community the like the this family business helps out that family business that's that's what it's all about. And so, and then there is always a person in that small town that's either coming back after having been gone for a long time or a new person moving into that community. Yeah. If you have liked Schitt's Creek, her newest book, uh, It Happened One Summer, is about an Alexis Rose type character getting stuck in a small town. So, uh, yes. That yeah, is, there's that one. That's Tessa Bailey. Um, yes, uh, she has uh, a, a duology or two and a half because the third one is a is a short story called a Runaway Girl, and it's it it's about a small town and someone who runs away from a wedding on the wedding day um, in the first one, and then the second one is about the the other person in the wedding party who also runs away from the wedding. Um, they're both very good. They, the, the small, the small town and that is the rumor mill that sort of aggregates what they think is happening in this relationship. Uh, there's another one that's called Forbidden Hearts, which is a three book series of hers, also about a small town and about all of the grudges that families keep for generations. And, um, mm. a lot of the couples are, I, I want to say Romeo and Juliet-ish. They, they don't end up tragically, but they are from feuding families and they should not be together, but they're grown adults and they figure it out in a better way than poison and stabbing. So, <laughs> um, I, sorry, I'm playing my, my banjo. But oh, yes. Uh, uh, maybe yeah. a little bit Hatfields of that. Hatfields and so, McCoys. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So a lot of that. So if, if you like that, uh, basically pick up any, <laughs> almost any book in the Tessa Bailey catalog. I don't want to say any book because I haven't read her entire catalog, but a lot of it is about small towns. Mm -hmm. uh, the other person, um, your 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 feuding reminded me of Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan, which is about to have a sequel in the world, though I guess she's not calling it a series. Very weird, called Travis, but it's set. It's a character from Archer's Voice set in the same town. Um, he. Archer is in an accident and goes to live with his uncle and there's still a lot of hurt feelings about this accident and the town treats him oddly because of it and he's sort of ostracized but uh, it all turns out great and that's also I think maybe a one of my top books of the year or did we read that last year that was last my year. top book of last year damn it uh, excellent book I really liked it a lot um, yeah Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, that one's really good. We, it is the only Mia Sheridan that we've read, so I can't really comment on whether mm -hmm. or not the rest of her catalog is also about small towns. But that one True. is, and the town does play a major role in mm -hmm. both of their lives um, at, yeah. and is sort of a character in, in the entire thing. And then the, um, the other author on my list of people who likes to write about small towns or use the small town dynamic as the the like the catalyst to bring your characters closer is um rebecca weatherspoon uh her beards and bondage series in its entirety all three books have to do with being in a small town for v various reasons but in all three books they go to a small town and um in sanctuary the town plays a significant role in um 
have in uh, harbor. I feel like they go into town like once or twice, but the town isn't as <laughs> big of a part of it. And uh, mm -hmm. and then Haven also the, the the town is more prevalent in that one. Uh, but so out of the three, Harbor is the only one where they're like, there is a town, like we know that the town is there, but they just <laughs> hang out at the house a lot. Um, and yeah, then so, there's proximity. Yes. Uh, though they choose their proximity like that of the yeah. three of them, like mm. they, they decide to to stay Excellent. in in the house intentionally. Um, and then the other one of hers that comes to mind is Zenny. Uh, mm -hmm. A marriage of inconvenience, which has to do with either the same town, the it's the same town as it is in Beards and Bondage, because mm -hmm. the male main character from Zenny is one of the side characters we meet in Beards and Bondage. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. same small town, also a lot like it's kind of great. You sort of get a tiniest, tiniest taste of the couples from uh mm -hmm. beards in bondage but yeah and then she has an entire series about cowboys which i imagine has them all being in small towns <laughs> uh, maybe there's I big city cowboys cowboy. <laughs> uh, no <laughs> no <laughs> no they're if they are they're posing they might just okay. be in for the cattle show that's okay or the state fair that's also all right all right but you have to I have very strong opinions about cowboys. Uh, perhaps that will be a whole nother episode. We can get into my psyche about it, but that's going to be a pass for me on reading okay. uh, cowboy romances. There you sorry. go. Sorry. No, it's fine. What is on um, your list of, of small town stories? I don't have a lot. I haven't read quite as many of these as you have. Um, I added Simmer Down by Sarah Smith. It is set on a Hawaiian island, which I feel like a whole Hawaiian island, except for maybe Honolulu, is a small town. Uh, and she's, she drives her food truck up and down and around the island. And that it doesn't play a huge part, but the community, the food community, is uh, a portion of that book. Uh, and is uh, it's just delightful. And I just want to move to Hawaii. So uh, read that book when you miss the warm tropical waters of our 50th state. Um, okay, so then yeah. what did you think I thought of at the beginning of the mini-sode? What was, what was the book you wrote down? Oh, I wrote down Scarlet Sea. And I wrote down... Okay, and I wrote down Cerulean Sea. Oh, <laughs> excellent. We are... Our telepathy is 50-50. I got 50% of it. I got C. Uh, it's because I mentioned like tiny little dollhouses and that is a portion of the, of the Startless Sea. Yes. I uh, thought Cerulean Sea uh, because he goes to an island mm -hmm. where there and is... And the town they go to... When and there's a small the town and the... Yeah, yeah, and so the small town and yeah. the island... Uh, and it's the end of the the train, like it's the last stop on the train the right, tracks, the, right? And like when he gets let off at the off of the train, there's no one there. It's like a, a very yes, yeah, so it's very small town, and there's a lot of conversation about small town mentality and and be like what it means to live in a small town. Um, mm -hmm. That uh, the house on the Cerulean Sea by T J. Clune is the yeah. entire title of yeah. that. Not just Cerulean Sea. Yeah. That was just my shorthand for it. Yeah. Um, the other one that I thought of uh, is Beach Read, actually, by Emily Henry. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it that is also a small town because there's only one bookstore, and only one yep. coffee shop, and only one book club that they end up at. Yep. So, <laughs> Sure. Right on. Now... I believe there's probably a Talia Hibbert you have not yet talked about. Oh my gosh, I've completely forgotten to talk about Talia <laughs> Hibbert in a mini-sode. How is that even possible? So, yes, thank you for this one. It was at the very top of the list, and so I skipped right past it. Work For It by Talia Hibbert is a short-ish, it's like a long, it's a novella. <laughs> it's a short-ish story. It's a novella about uh, a a fish out of water coming to a small town 
and meeting this this very prim and proper Englishman, meeting this very rugged farmer in a small town. And this farmer is integral to the economy of the small town. And I genuinely don't remember why the prim and proper Englishman is there, but the shenanigans they get into and the spiciness that is that novella. Um, yes. Is it uh, heterosexual, homosexual? Oh, sorry, it's two men. Excellent. I, I was I was figuring that based on the way you were wording things, but I wanted to be clear for our listeners. Yes, sorry, yes. I haven't read it, it. Is oh, it is two men, and there is uh, there is so much very explicit conversation about what they do to each other's. I'm gonna say zucchinis to stay with the farmer theme. Cucumbers, eggplants. <laughs> It's more the the implication is it's bigger than a cucumber. My goodness, hotness. Okay, I well, mean, like, so if you're into like no. hairy, burly farmer stuff, <laughs> so eloquent here at Booklandia. I try real hard, but Talia Hibbert makes me speechless and very warm all the time. Yeah, it's warm in here now. Um, cool. I know what I'm throwing on my TBR immediately. Thanks for that. Yeah, as you should. So are you, dear audience human, going to pick up this book now that you've heard our review? Let us know in the comments. Have a suggestion for another review? Slide on into our DMs. If you like this adventure in books or updates on our upcoming projects, please follow, like, save, subscribe, rate, review us on Instagram at l.skyford, on Twitch at lskyford, and on Twitter at skyfordl. Phew, I'm Sky. And I'm Ford. And that's it for this mini-sode. We will see you next time on Booklandia, where every book is a whole world to explore.